All right, uh, given the recent updates and fixes in the bookings connector, the fact that we now have access to those custom question and answers in a booking uh, through the, the, the three triggers that are available, I wanted to do a quick video, uh, just sort of a demonstration. I'm not going to walk through everything, how to do everything, but basically show you what I've done um, in terms of building a system for tracking the booking information. So. Um, booking, while bookings is great, it doesn't have a lot in the way of kind of reporting and auditing and such. So if something were to happen where an appointment gets deleted from the, uh, the customers, the client's uh, calendar or the person whose time was booked calendar, the service provider, the staff calendar, uh, or even the bookings calendar itself, they're could be some confusion. So having a separate list, in this case, I'm using a list in SharePoint where all of those actions are going to be logged is going to help uh, just close that gap and give us a way to to kind of report on how the service is being used in our organization, uh, at least in this particular calendar. And just to refresh, you do need to, there are three triggers in the bookings connector, one for when calendar when a booking is created, one when a booking is modified, and one when a booking is canceled. So basically you at a minimum I would think would want to create three separate flows using each of those triggers so that you can first off catalog the booking when it's the appointment when it's booked uh, and then update that entry if there are uh, basically if the that appointment is modified or if it's canceled so you'll want to make sure to flag that so you don't uh, basically still see it as an active booking in that SharePoint list. So this is our booking calendar. Uh, first, I'm just going to show you real quick the, the list that I created. Uh, this is in my help desk SharePoint site. I simply called it bookings tracker. And I don't have a ton of columns here. We've got customer name, customer email, service name, because in our booking calendar, we have two services. We have an application support and a virtual consultation. Uh, so we've got the service name, service questions and answers. So with bookings, you can, with each service, you can have specific, uh, when you go into the service details, so for the application support service, there are questions like which application do you want help with? This is a, so I edit this, we can see that the, which application. This is a choice list of bookings, OneDrive, SharePoint, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that is required. And then we have another, which is simply a text entry question of briefly describe what you want to do. So basically this service has uh, those questions. My virtual consultation service does not have any custom questions. So what we want to do is in the case of if it is a uh, application support booking, we want to track or, or list those questions and answers here. Um, then we've, obviously we've got things like the start time, end time, uh, because we are using Teams to so have the Teams meeting link, a booking ID, which is an internal GUID for each booking event. This is going to be useful for the other flows that I'm not going to get to today, but eventually you'll want to flow to update this booking entry when uh, it's either changed or canceled, so you'll need that booking ID to positively identify this particular booking. Uh, and then the status, which is just going to be book a, uh, booked by default or canceled if it is canceled. Uh, so those are the columns we've got. Um, the Just as a note, the service questions and answers and the team's meeting link are multiple lines of text with rich text formatting and that's because I want to be able to uh, format these questions and answers in a certain way and the team's meeting link is just too long for a single line of text field um, so we'll see in the flow how I've formatted it so it's a nice link to that team's meeting all right uh, and obviously you could add other columns here if you want to add uh, information about the staff who uh, with whom it was booked etc probably be a good idea I just didn't think of that so uh, feel free to add that data as well <clears throat> all right so taking a look at our flow uh, simply call it demo new booking in personal counseling 
And if we edit this, uh, we can see we're using when an appointment is created trigger. And I just have a compose here to get the body details. Just this was more for my own troubleshooting and diagnostics to, to see what that data looks like coming in so that we know how to format it uh, within the, the rest of the flow. And then I'm using a select here just to make my life a little bit easier um, in terms of, of getting the the, the questions and answers for those custom questions and answers values uh, when applicable because it's a little easier to navigate through the output of the select than it is the whole body of the, the trigger output. So that'll make more sense momentarily. Uh, next we've got a variable. I'm just using a string variable here called var service questions answers which I will then update depending on which service is, is selected with the appropriate information. because Again, because different services will have different questions, different answers, uh, or they might not have any. Uh, so we want to make sure to account for that. So just initializing that variable here. And next we have a switch. And switch is, think of it as a, um, a condition with a single uh, value. So basically we're just looking at the service name value coming in. And if that is if the service name is application support, then I'm going to update that uh, or append, or I could also use set, to be honest. It doesn't have to be append. I just am somewhat trained to use append for other things. Uh, but I'm going to append to that uh, string variable that I initialized, where basically I'm saying the body or the question of the, you know, the custom, first custom question and then the response to that and then what they want to do. I could also include the, you know, we'll, we'll update this to include the actual question of the second one just to be consistent. But this is kind of one of the reasons or one of the things I wanted to point out in this video was kind of how to navigate that because the custom questions and responses are coming in as an array. Since there are maybe more than one, it, it will be formatted as an array. So you do need to understand a little bit about uh, kind of navigating that structure. So what I'm going to do is basically show you what this looks like. So in here, I'll just remove what we've got there. So I'm going to click within the, and this is just HTML strong tags to make that bold. Uh, but I'm going to click in there and then go over to our expression panel and just Press the space bar, just put one space in there, then you can go back to the dynamic content. And I want to find that select action. Uh, this is kind of the easy way to do it without remembering the names of your, all your actions. So, But it's also good to be sure to name your actions appropriately. So this is my select action. I'm going to select the output there. Uh, and that gets us essentially the body of that output. And then I can go back over the expression tab. And in order to navigate that, so the the structure of, of arrays is such that they are, in this case, it's an array of objects because each question and answer is an object. We've got, you know, key value of question name and question body and key value of answer and the answer body, or the value of the answer, rather. So what we're looking at here is the the entire body so what I need to do is navigate into or specify the first question uh, and I'm going to do that using the array index and that's just simply a square bracket and then a number array indexes start at zero so zero will be the first item in that array so basically the first question that you added that will be array or item number zero so I want zero, and then to get the question from that, uh, I need to put a square bracket and single quote and just the word question. Now, when you see other videos, you might see them throw in question marks in between these. And that's actually a good troubleshooting step or a good good error handling step because if you don't include the question mark and let's say you mistyped question the flow will fail because it doesn't find 
something, and let's say you leave the, the U out of question, it won't find that value and then the flow will fail. If you put the question mark, it's kind of like try to find this value. If it doesn't, it won't fail, but it won't give you the result you're looking for. So the question marks are kind of like a, just an error handling step. So I'm going to leave those in there and click OK. And then just to make our life a little bit easier, I can just copy that And within here, I'm going to see that again. Go to expression. I can just paste in and just change question to answer. And then for the second question here, uh, I want to just remove that static text that I had. And I can still paste in that same thing. I just need to change the array index here to one because what I want is the second question uh, not the first and then this we'll see is already retrieving the first or the, the index one answer there uh, so that's the appending those service question and answers when it is an application support booking now the way switches work is that you can define multiple values so it will always be an equal so Essentially, it's going to say, does service name equal application support? If so, do this. And then you can define as many other values. Now, because we only have two services, I don't actually need to, to call the other one or, or look for uh, virtual uh, appointment because it will simply default to, if it's not application support, default is what, uh, what it'll do otherwise. So within here, I'm simply updating or appending to that variable just uh, not applicable and surrounding that with emphasis tags so it'll be in italics just to kind of make that jump out a little bit. Alright, so that is our switch that's defining our you know questions and answers there. And then finally I'm just creating an item in that SharePoint list. So the title column, even though in the list I renamed it to customer name, the internal name is still title. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you rename the column, the title column, it will still be referred in Power Automate to as title. Uh, then we've got customer email, and these I simply am able to pluck out of the dynamic content. So we just get the customer name and the same thing with the customer email and the service name. So those are all fairly easy to get. Now for the service questions and answers, uh, because, because it is allowing rich text formatting, by default you'll see a, uh, a formatting control here, you know, WYSIWYG editor um, type control, but because I'm dropping in code, I'm doing all that formatting of the HTML in the variable itself, I'm just dropping it straight in using the uh, HTML view. Um, so just to show you what that, normally you'll see this. If you want to put straight HTML in here, you'll just click the code view button, erase whatever is there, and then you can drop in the variables or values, whatever it is you want to put there. And then we're setting the start time, the end time, and then for that Teams meeting link, again, I'm formatting this using some, some HTML, nothing fancy, just an href tag to make, uh, have the text that appears as Teams meeting link, and use the join web URL output from the body as the hyperlink there. And then that booking ID is just the ID of the booking, which again, if you'll be able to get in the It'll simply be listed as ID from the trigger body. Uh, so that's what you want to use there. And then the booking status value, uh, I have it set as a default to booked in the the list itself, but I so it doesn't I don't have to set it here, but I'm going to anyway. And then simply hit save. Now to demo this, I'm going to jump over to one of the other users in my tenant, and he's going to book an application support appointment and he'll select Peter oh, let me just refresh this
I'll select Peter and let's say he's going to book that for Friday the 12th at 6.05 p.m. And then of course he has to put in his name. And this is one of my general gripes with, with bookings. I kind of wish, since I'm requiring people, I'm only allowing people in the organization to use this, I really wish it would automatically fill in their name and their email. Um, I feel like it used to, and at some point it didn't anymore, and I'm not sure why. But let me just... And then the additional information. So those, this is where the custom questions come in. And let's say that he wants to learn about uh, OneDrive and need help with a request, a file request folder. And he'll click book. And it'll take a moment or two for that to process. And this isn't a demo of booking, so I could go to the calendar and show you where those, uh, where that shows up in the calendar. But I'm just going to go over to our help desk booking tracker and refresh. And there we go. We'll see that uh, there it is. Andrew Carter, his email address, the service name, application support, uh, which application. OneDrive. What do you want to do? Now I probably should have put a a line break in here or something just to you can format this a little HTML goes a long way however you'd like uh, we've got the start time the end time the team's meeting link that booking ID and then the status now let's just show how booking a help book another virtual consultation with Chad on the 15th at 11 a.m. and again Put in the name. And there are no custom questions here, so he can simply click book. And jumping back over to our tracker, just that quickly, there it is. Uh, in this case, because it was the virtual consultation, there were no service questions or answers, so it simply says not applicable. Uh, now, obviously, you can expand this if your service, you know, if you have 10 different services, that switch uh, action might get a little crazy because you're going to, it's going to get very wide, defining a separate um, value or separate action to populate that variable based on which service it is if they've got different questions different answers etc um, but obviously this is a pretty simple example uh, and i would bet that most people using bookings don't have more than a few of these service requests and if they do have custom questions they're probably similar questions across the different services so that's kind of up to you you only really need to define that variable if those are going to be different um, the, those custom questions and answers are going to be different from one service to another so hopefully this was helpful um, if you have any questions please throw those in the comments down below and as always thank you and have a great day